Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you some PDF analysis using the new version of PPDF. And like I said, it's um, it's a pretty easy way to update PPDF. He updated it, um, Jose updated it um, with the release at Black Hat this year. Basically, you just have to do PPDF dash U, and it'll check if there's any updates. And if there is, it'll it'll go ahead and uh, install it. And there's a couple extra libraries, uh, PyLib, EMU, that you also have to install and everything like that. And I have some links on my blog on some of the things I had to do to get it to link, um, to update the links and things like that. Anyways, let's get started. So we have PPDF, just the same thing we used to, we're used to, um, I for interactive mode, and then the PDF you want to analyze. And this is the one we're going to analyze today. And you see here now we have things in color. Um, so now if you, the reason why Jose did this is to help you kind of quickly and easily try and find things that you might want to quickly take a look at. You know, this has a lot of different objects in it, right? So what Jose did is said, well, these are the ones that could be potentially really interesting. You know, objects with JavaScript code, um, we have some suspicious elements, acroforms, um, JavaScripts, um, names, things like that. So um, that's the reason for the color. But if you decide you didn't want color, if you just did, um, when you open it up, G for Grinch mode, um, then you see it without the color. This way then you can easily copy and paste and you can put into a report and not worry about the color schemes. But I like color, so let's go back. So okay, we have an object with JS code, which is probably the first thing you want to take a look at. But let's just quickly look at some of the other ones. So we can go just like before, well, and if you have any questions on like what you can do, you can go to help and you can see all the different commands you can run. So let's just quickly, let's just do offsets, is it offsets, and then help. And it'll tell you what exactly you can do. So for each version, you can do it. Or if you just do offset on its own, it'll do everything for you. So quickly taking a look at this, you know, OK, so we have obviously a lot of objects here. One that should really be interesting um, is object 126. And actually, Jose pointed this out to me when I was um, emailing him back and forth with some issues I was having. And he said, you know, th definitely um, this is something that you would want to take a look at because it's so large compared to all the other ones. But let's, um, let's get back on track here. Another, interest, uh, another great tool that it's been in the previous versions is tree. Uh, just another way of taking a look at all the data. We see um, action JavaScript in 108. Um, and then inside that is a stream of 110. So let's just do object 108. And that gives reference to 110. And here we have our, our code here. So this looks like obviously something obfuscated, lots of it. And it says using flight decode. And it has a key here, or k equals 0x5c, says put xor string into s1. That's very useful for us. Um, not usually very often that the bad guys do that type of stuff, so that's nice. So basically what it's doing is it's um, changing this into a character, and then it's doing uh, it's um, xoring it against a key, and then it's evaling it. So let's see if we can try and mimic that here. So one of the great things that Jose did in, in this version is um, you were able to now um, output things. Instead of doing the set, um, file or set variable thing, you can now just output it directly to a variable. So we can do, um, let's say, JS code. Let's just show you what JS code does. It shows the JavaScript code found on the object. Oops. So we want to do um, 110, and then this will output it to a variable. So let's call it JavaScript. Java, it's helpful if you spelled it right. Cool. So now I can do show JavaScript. And, and then we have it. And we see it actually did the, um, tra the change for us into the what it would be in, in hex. So that's kind of interesting, right? So now um, there's another way of, there's another thing you can do with this. So now there's also um, double. So that means it's actually just going to append to the variable on um, whatever you want to output. So like we did this, we did show JavaScript. It actually will have that in here twice, right? So we don't want that. Let's just make sure that works. Oops. Show JavaScript. Let's make sure it's just one. Yep, just one. Okay, cool. So we're back to where we need to be. So one of the cool things now that we have in PDF is XOR. So we already know we have to XOR, right? So let's 
see the help for XOR. Basically, it just performs the XOR operation. You have to give it um, the file or the variable or the stream you want, and then the key. So, okay. So, let's just see what XOR search does. Searches for a specified string and result of XOR brute forcing. So if we knew, like, we're looking for a certain type of, like, CMD or, um, like, we want to look for an executable, so, you know, DOS or anything like that, um, we can do a search for that, and it'll actually do some brute forcing for us. But we know the key, so we don't even have to worry about that. So XOR, um, the variable name, which is JavaScript, right? Um, the key, which is 0x5c, right? Let's check. And then let's actually output it to another variable called unobfuscated. Okay, so now show on. <laughs> I don't know why I choose the the letter number, <laughs> the words that are so hard to spell. There we go. So here now we have some, we have some. Um, this actually turned into our shell code, right? So this. The stuff right here is is all this after the eval has been run, the string from car code, and then the, it's XORed with the key. So we see here we have if the app viewer version is greater than eight, we're gonna do some stuff. We have a no op slide looks like right here, and we have this unescape, which is possibly our shell code. And then it's adding the no op and the shell code together, and it's doing a bunch of other things. And we see some some weird things. So if we wanted to try and change that, we could probably do some editing to the variable itself to only focus on the the, the, the snippet that we wanted, and then we wouldn't have the um, the weird output text right here. But anyway, so now we can do JS analyze, and you can also do tab completion here. So that's always nice as well. Variable uh, on hub. Didn't have enough coffee this morning either. Skated. And let's put that to a new one called chill code. It's just so much easier than having to do the set variable and stuff like that. Yes. So now if we do show shell code. Cool. So this is our, our shell code analyzed here. So just scroll up a second here. So let's see, we see, looks like create file, um, get file size, um, file write, module handles, process. So we see it's kind of, you can kind of see some of the API calls here. And we have some bad stuff here. And then we see this program files, Kaspersky lab, Kaspersky internet. So it's could possibly be um, looking for these files. And then we see something, Adobe update.exe. So now, um, the reason why I actually was emailing Jose was because I was actually trying to get SC test to run against this. And as you'll see, SC test variable shellcode. It actually doesn't run. And the reason for that is because if you actually take a look at the, the API calls, it is looking for git file size. So what we think what it is, is it's trying to actually find the open PDF, right? Because generally when you're running this in the real world, you know, the PDF's open and this exploit is running. So it's actually going into the PDF to um, find the, the bad file. And actually, um, when Jose pointed out object 126, if you go and take a look at object 126, uh, it, looks kind of, it looks kind of ugly. But what we see here, let me see, scroll up. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. So here's an executable right here. So we could potentially extract this, and then we'd have our executable, right? Um, I'd actually tried using PDF extract and I actually didn't extract it. But if we have the offsets, we could probably just take out the offsets and then we'd have our executable. We see here, it looks like an executable. We have the RSC, the data, our data. Um, scrolling down. Well, again, we see, um, where'd it go? Create, delete file, get Windows directory, get temp file name, get temp path. Um, print F, create, uh, deleting some keys and things like that. So this is something that we could try and take a look at. You also see a, a key apparently. Um, delete us.bat, and then we see you know some metadata stuff, right? I thought I saw something for AV in here, but I can't remember off the top of my head. So you know that's another thing we can do possibly um, let's play with is trying to actually extract this out. And um, actually one of the other posts I'm talking about is a tool. Uh, called crypt crypt am um, it's a script that will actually extract um, exit files out of pdfs and word documents and uh, i'll do it against this one as well to see if the executable is actually grabbed but um, another cool thing you can do with 
uh, the new version of PPDF is you can actually do um, you can do hash, right? Hash. So say, okay, I have my shell code, right? So I want to hash variable shell code, and there's my, sh you know. So that's just something again you can just put into your um, your database if you want to say, okay, I know this is shell code, I know it's bad. You can put that in there, or if you just want to, um, you know, different streams and things like that, you can run it against there because obviously bad guys are lazy too, and they like to reuse um, malicious code all over the place. Um, if you take a look at enough PDF documents, you'll see that a lot. Um, so if this way, then if you see that ever again, you're like, okay, I know exactly what the exploit is, and I know exactly what it's dropping, or have a good idea of what it's, of what it's dropping. So um, that's just another cool thing you can do. So um, obviously there's a lot more things in PPDF. I highly suggest you guys go and take a look at the change log and see all the cool stuff you can do. Um, play around with the XORs, with all the, the documents that you guys have. But it's a great, great tool, and thanks, Jose, for making it possible for us to use. Cheers. Bye.